Good morning. Are my antique picture frames worth anything or not? My name is Jason Roski. I'm the KC Auction and Appraisal Company here in Kansas City, Missouri. And this week we're going to be talking about antique and vintage picture frames and what makes them interesting, valuable, or not. And what you should be looking for if you're out there looking to find a frame for a painting or for a picture, or if you have a bunch laying around the house, your grandparents' house, what do you do with them? How do you find out what's valuable or not? Give me a second. I'll share this on my personal page. This is a comment, this is a question we get regularly. We hear this comment a lot that uh, I think the frame is worth more than the picture inside of it. And sometimes that is absolutely the case. Let me just get right. Uh, so what do we look for? What do our clients and customers look for when they're looking at or for antique picture frames? What makes one more or less valuable than another? And what are some of the things that you should be looking for? If you're out there, you know, thrift stores, flea markets, antique shops, estates, sales, auctions, wherever you may be, what are some of the things that you should be looking for if you're looking to buy a frame or if you're looking to sell a frame, what things do you need to be aware of in the uh, frames that you're offering to sell that could make yours worth more or less than a generic frame? So like any other antique, quality is paramount. Secondly is condition. Um, you can have picture frames restored. We've had it done for clients and customers over the years just like the same as a painting with the uh, John Douglas Patrick estate. We had a bunch of frames that he had, some matched up to the paintings. And we uh, sometimes we had the picture and the frame restored and the frame restoration. There could be some cost to that, but it is amazing the difference it makes a good looking antique frame, especially an appropriate good looking antique frame when you're displaying a piece of art on your wall uh, and putting a family picture in it. And any other you know, great mirror in a hallway, you know, the frame and the mirror is really the important part. The mirror is generic. You can put a piece of reflective glass on there and have a mirror. It's what is holding the mirror that makes it important. And that's where this conversation starts from. So I want to give you a really quick rundown. It's not that long ago that picture frames were considered superfluous or not necessary at all. In fact, back in the up into the 70s and 80s, museums would regularly change frames. In fact, I found a quote from 1993 which is 25 years ago, but it's still within our realm of you know, what we do today. Uh, Carrie Rabora, who was the American curator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, I'm gonna read this quote verbatim. Uh, so she was a high level museum gallery expert, saw this daily. She said, quote, people felt the frame should match their chairs rather than the painting inside it. And that is from August, 1993. And this was very prevalent. Uh, if you look back, in fact, some of the pieces that we have sold that have had a museum provenance, rarely if the museum was displayed before the 90s, do you find it in the original frame. Almost always they put a contemporary frame on it uh, to match the chairs, to match the furniture and decor of the day. And they thought that the framing, the molding around it was less important than the work itself. And absolutely, in, in most cases, it's, it's not as important but it is amazing the difference a quality frame makes on a piece. Hey, Mike, thanks for watching. If you're watching, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, the smiley face. If you have questions or comments, go ahead and post them here during the video. I'll answer them as I can. Uh, or if you're watching this after we're live, I'll answer them when I, when I see them. But so we see, you know, paintings and pieces that were displayed in museums in the 70s and 80s and really nice, simple, elegant walnut frames that match the time, but they're not appropriate to the... Uh, uh, to the picture at all. Hi, Mercedes. Thanks for watching. And so what do you want to be looking for? So there's there certain names that you want to be looking for. One of, you know, Nuka Macklin is a really popular frame, frame maker back in the day. Foster Brothers, uh, House of Heidenreich. A lot of these companies, you know, as with all antiques, if it was expensive new, odds are it's expensive in, in used in vintage and antique markets. And when you look at frames, and I got a couple here to show you real quick. Um, you know, this frame right here looks pretty good. Uh, first blush, it looks like a really nice Italian Florentine type frame. But the quality, this is all like applied and solid stencil. It's from the 60s. It's a Turner ball accessory. But uh, the, um, the, the quality is, looks there, but it's not there. This frame here, on the other hand, is about the same time frame. But it's, you can see that it has a lot more, actually, this is actually in-depth carving, and it's not signed, um, but you can see that there's depth and there's a nice finish to it. So that's something you want to uh, pay attention to is the quality of the work. I see Mercedes asked a question. 
uh, is signed important? Absolutely. Um, in anything, whether it's a frame, a painting, a piece of glass, if it's signed, you have a place to start. You can find out where it came from originally. We just sold a frame for an estate, for the Cultus estate. It was a house in Heidenreich frame. And we kind of heard that name, but didn't really know much about it. We knew where to look for it and found out that the frame was very, very valuable. It was a hand car frame, very well done, and just made the painting that was in it better look better than it might have been otherwise, because it was very impressive. It made the painting inside impressive. Uh, and so that's the other thing. Uh, let me show you. I've got a couple other frames here. Let's go back to the Victorian era. You know, that's true antique stuff. This is, and this is a little bit rough. But this is a pretty standard cove frame, Victorian walnut, the gilded liner. Uh, you see these a lot. And these were really, really pricey a few years ago, um, before the internet came along, and you didn't realize how much of it was out there. But the value on those is based upon the depth of the cove. How deep is it? Is it two inch, three inch, four, six? I mean, you can, you know, the, the deeper the cove, the more expensive it was new. And so that's going to be something to keep in mind, secondary market. Um, some of the other things that we're always looking for, the condition, the quality, and the style. When you're, when you're look there, let's say you're looking for frames, the style of the frame makes a huge difference in when it was made. So if you can, back to Mercedes' um, question about being signed, if you find a signature on it, you can find out the exact date of it. And so let's say you're looking to put a nice 1920s arts and crafts painting in a frame. Well, if you find a Stickley Brothers or a Roycroft frame, obviously they're going to be worth more and they're going to be appropriate for the time frame. You can always email us pictures, Mercedes. Uh, you can post them here. You can send us private messages. And we can get you, give you an idea real quick. I like that wide one on the frame. Yeah, Mike, it's a nice frame. It absolutely is. It's a good wide uh, cove on that. And so when you have a wider cove, it makes the piece inside of it more important. You want to balance the size of the frame with the size of the picture. And uh, that makes a big difference. So when you're looking at it for yourself, let's say you have a painting you've picked up at a thrift store or at an estate sale, you inherited something that has been the frame and replaced. You know, if you have a small frame, depending upon what you want to do with it, if you want to make it subtle, you want to keep a smaller frame. If you want to make the painting look bigger and more impressive than it is, you put a wide, coat, wide, wide frame on there and it makes it look a lot more interesting. Um, some of the things to the industry, like I said, some of the names, I'm going to talk about, oh, one of the biggest names in the uh, frame industry is Eli Wilner. Woohoo! look at all the hearts flying. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, Eli Wilner, he has written several books on antique frames. He's done conservation and restoration work for some of the world's largest galleries and museums, the Smithsonian, all the major museums in New York and, and across the world. Uh, he has a great information on his website, and you'll see... Um, even down to the name tag, uh, or the, the, the information tag on the front of a frame can be so important uh, because it sets it apart. The customization of a frame can make it more valuable. And so if you had a frame that you had made for a painting and you have the tag on there that says it was made for that painting, well, it just makes it look more impressive. It makes it look more important to that piece. And that will make it, that will drive value of not only that frame, but of that of that piece in general. Um, so if you're out there looking, if somebody, if you're finding a frame that has a tag on it, but the painting is gone, well, look, take a close look at that frame. There's a reason why they gave the extra effort and the extra attention to creating that tag. And oftentimes that, that, that paint, that frame will be interesting or well, good quality. That's, that's so, so important is the quality of the frame. Is it hand carved or is it machine stamped? Uh, when you look at antique frames, especially, you know, most frame is just a uh, molding, like trim molding you buy for your, your floorboards, your house, and it's just applied, it's just finished a little bit differently and connected to the corners. And so if you have a repeated pattern, say an egg and dart pattern, how closely do the patterns match up in the corners? That's such a hard thing to do in a mass produce. I've got 85 running feet of framing. I need a 12 by 14 frame, chop, chop, chop. You cut three, you know, three times. You got four pieces. You slap them together. Don't worry about the corners. Well, that you can tell that when you look at it. The the the, the patterns instead of lining up like my fingers here, they're going to be like this, and that is a lesser quality frame. The, the attention put into that when it was made 
is reflected in the quality in the, in the piece in the market. And the piece that lines up perfectly, you know, is going to be worth more than the piece that lines up like that because it, it highlights the, the image in front side of it or the mirror or the whatever you have inside there, but it doesn't take away from it. And so that's something you want to look at when we find a hand carved frame. 99 out of 100 times that the, the, the work in the corners is going to be flowing. It's going to be, uh, it's just going to work. It's going to be, make the, make the corners, see, they're, they're going to join together, but they're not going to be uh, staggered. They're not going to be out of whack. And that makes a huge difference. No, you aren't a frame shop. Is it your opinion that it is worthwhile to repurpose a vintage frame? Absolutely. Um, again, it depends on what you're putting inside of it, Mike. But we absolutely uh, we sell antique frames. We uh, and we have clients who are looking for frames all the time, our customers, and they're always looking to to find value in that because it makes it can make an antique or vintage painting look so much better. And when you're in an antique shop or a gallery or an estate sale and you see a painting on the wall, the frame is as much part of it as the painting itself. Like I talked about before, and it's not that long ago, 25, 30 years ago, that museums were saying, I want a contemporary frame on an antique painting. And it wasn't until about nine, the 90s that people started to really look at, well, maybe there's a reason why the artist put that frame with that painting. Are Victorian pictures worth much? Depends on the picture and it depends on the frame. The more detailed, if I can grab one, I have right here. So this is a really wonderful Victorian era aesthetic movement frame and it's heavy. But you can see, let me go and frame myself. <laughs> you can see how wide this is. I mean, I've got you know decent sized hands. I'm trying to get this here. And this is, you know, it's six inches deep. And you see how wide the frame is. And that's the original gilded finish. You can see. So we have the details to look for when you risk that on the desk. You see these little lines here, these little seams? Well, that's gold leaf. And so they took, you know, gold paper leaf like you buy today at the, at the frame store, at an art store, and they laid it down. Of course, you have to overlap that at the edges so you get full coverage. But you can see that little detail, that's all hand done then. That means that was all hand worked. Looking at the back, you can see this is absolutely an antique frame by the, the, the patination on the back that's all, that's just the wood is oxidized over a hundred years. So what makes this one worth quite a bit? On Cherish right now, there's a frame similar to this and they're asking about $1,300. It's been restored. So you can see here, trying to do this backwards in the camera. That's a little bit of uh, chipping to the gesso. All right, so that's, this is all layered and then there's a gesso and a gilding applied to it. That can be replaced. So this is all, you have to take this to an a, a art restoration company or a frame restoration company. You can take them and they can take and make a cast and mold of the pattern and line it there. And then they re, they clean it and rebuild the entire frame. And it's really spectacular. Um, so this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. So you can see there's seven different bands of decoration. Every band costs more money when it was made new. Every band costs more time to create. And so the wider, you know, this, these three are one big molding, but there's, you know, several different coves there. Um, it took longer to make it, to, it. It was more expensive. It gives you more impressive. A lot of times you see just this part or just this part, but to have the liner and this makes it worth, you know, a very impressive frame. Let me set this down. Oh, and this one actually has a tag on it right there. And I don't remember what this says. It's talking about antique frames. Oh, Finley, Charles Finley. All right. And that one says picture frame. So Finley is still around today, I believe. Charles Finley had a gallery here in Kansas City. Sorry, they had a gallery here in Kansas City. Then they had galleries in Chicago and New York. And uh, that is from the Patrick estate. That's one of the frames we still have to sell for that Patrick collection. And uh, he had we actually know that he had a working relationship with the Fidley Gallery here in town based upon some uh, letters and information that we have found over the last six months. But that you can find when you have the company name, you can do the research and find out when the company was in business. Are they still in business? What is their reputation? If you start Googling like a Turner product like we first showed, you find out they did mass production, really, really produced pieces for like the home interiors market, the home uh, 
home co what my, my mom used to sell uh the finley frames not they're a little bit higher quality they cost more new and so they're gonna have more value in the secondary market uh wow well, yes what type of art would you pair this frame so you want to look at the time frame so that frame there was made in 1880s 1890s maybe as late as 1900 so generally speaking the paint the artwork made in that time frame mike is what you want to put with it because they were made at the same time so it's an appropriate frame for the genre uh, and for the era if you have a really nice frame from the 1960s or 70s you want to find a nice piece of pop art if you have a nice piece of pop art from the 60s or 70s say you have a a Warhol lithograph, or you have a Lichtenstein, or whoever you have, finding frames from the period often makes the entire package look good. Of course, there are some people who will go just the opposite. I've seen people put pop art pieces in a Victorian frame, and then it becomes more of a piece of art on its own, the entirety of it. Uh, you'll see that oftentimes with an anonymous artist. You find something that's interesting, but you can't identify the work to give it a different pizzazz. You want to put it into a frame that doesn't necessarily make sense with it, but they can be a lot of fun together. Thanks for watching. We'll wrap this up in a few minutes. If you have questions or thoughts or comments, post a question here, so, uh, send us a private message. Uh, hit the like button, share with your friends and family if you think there's interest amongst Joe's who would be able to see this information as well. So some of the things real quick to wrap up that we're looking for or that our customers are looking for more importantly, the quality. Is it a mass produced frame or is there hand carving or at least hand finished? Did they make sure that the seams lined up correctly? Did they make sure that the pattern repeated correctly? If it's a, you know, a three by five inch frame, do the, the, does the spacing of the pattern if repeated make sense or is it cut off and look chunky or sloppy? The, the condition, again, these frames I just showed you, some of them have some condition issues that can be addressed, but the better the condition, generally speaking, the more valuable simply because People like the idea of being able to take the frame and put the art into it and hang it on the wall. You can always adapt a frame. Uh, all these I showed here, you could make the cove a little bit bigger in the back if you, could, if you had a little bit larger piece, uh, or you can make it a little bit, you could tighten it up if you needed to. By any chance, dealer artists that just did black silhouettes of people, I think it was something like Walter. There was a few of them. Um, if you hadn't asked, I could have told you Mercedes uh yes i do but i'm not i'm drawing a blank right now um Edu eduard was one of them that made a lot of those and others those are almost always in really simple uh frames that are really made just to give you an idea of something to attach it to the wall and hang on the wall with uh the silhouettes because they're black and white they're so stark and so simple and minimalistic that you don't want to take away from that with a big, heavy, gaudy frame. So just the really thin banded, gilded frames are what you oftentimes see around those. They can be. We've sold uh, silhouettes upwards of five, six, seven hundred dollars. I know there's some that are worth thousands, depending upon who made them and when. Uh, again, with silhouettes, the value comes in. Was it a hand cut silhouette? Was it of a portrait of a person? What is the image? We sold uh, a silhouette of a mother playing with her daughter. Um, a couple of years ago, and there's a lot of excitement and interest in it because the image was different. Most silhouettes is just the husband and the wife standing there. Uh, you know, you see the profile of George and Martha. Those are pretty common. There, there's not a lot of emotion. There's not a lot of excitement there. But when you have interesting images, um, that's what's going to drive the value of a silhouette. And again, on the, something like that, you're going to have a simple frame because the minimalist of that image is what you want to draw attention to. So again, thank you all so much for watching. We had a really kind of a lively discussion. It took uh, already done 20 minutes and I appreciate y'all watching. Like we had a lot of people watching and a lot of questions. Thanks Mercedes and Mike and everybody else for asking questions and, and, and making comments and sharing this with your friends. Again, my name is Jason Roscoe in the Casey Auction and Appraisal Company here in Kansas City. This is our weekly question. Next week, we're gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to date items from ceramics to glassware, uh, silver, some really, some things that we look at immediately uh, that we can give you an idea, you can get an idea and uh, about what you're looking at so that you have a better idea of is it something from the 1950s, the 1850s, or somewhere in between 1750s. And there's some really easy tips and tricks to really eliminate a lot of or give you a lot of education on that. So you're welcome, Mercedes. Um, again, if you're watching this after we're on live, go and post questions here. We'll be happy to answer them. Send us a private message. 
Uh, if you have questions about specific items, you can always drop us pictures with emails with pictures at info at kcauctioncompany.com. You can give us a phone call at 816-283-3633. Go to our website, kcauctioncompany.com. Uh, our Facebook page, Instagram page, we post pictures there almost every day. You can see what's coming up. We do a lot of coming soon pictures there. And, of course, here on Facebook, we're active every day. Make sure you go to our uh, – we started a little fun thing this morning called the Alphabet Game. Uh, antiques and Collectibles by the first letter of the alphabet. Absolutely, Mercedes. I love having my brain picked on Facebook. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Have a great weekend. Hopefully it's a little cooler where you're at. It's going to be 92 to 95 degrees here this weekend, so I think there's going to be a, a few adult beverages consumed on the, uh, on the porch, and we'll have a great weekend. So thank you all so much for watching, and have a lovely weekend.